I downloaded literally every single CryptoPunk NFT. And I mean all of them. Like seriously, look at all of these. This is every single one. 10,000 items. That's a pretty beefy vertical scroll bar there. Bring it all the way down. Whoo. Now, I don't consider myself a cryptocurrency guy. I don't consider myself an NFT guy. I'm not by any means in producing this video a proponent of NFTs or encouraging or even discouraging the use of or not of NFTs and cryptocurrency. In fact, I don't want this thing to even be a dab on or some silly crazy thing against NFTs making fun of them by any means. I just hope I offer this to you as an interesting food for thought on what we are chatting about and what's the hot topic these days in the world of non-fungible tokens. Now, I'm not gonna start off this video and bore you with the whole explanation of what a non-fungible token or NFT really is, because you probably already know if you're watching this video, but I think it's an interesting conversation to be had because it's the world and society kind of just arbitrarily assigning value to something like we tend to do. And this is the whole gimmick of cryptocurrency in the first place, or currency at all, right? How come we've decided that this piece of paper has value when this piece of paper doesn't? Now for physical things like paper money or fiat currency, so far this works. Like we can arbitrarily assign worth and value to that thing. But in the realm of NFTs, when what we're giving and just arbitrarily assigning value is digital, ones and zeros, data, bits and bytes, uh, it's wrought with all of the same kind of dilemmas and problems that come with technology. And you might be saying, John, this is a cybersecurity YouTube channel, and you're totally right, and that's why we're gonna be chatting about it today. Because any individual, any old Joe Schmo, could right click, save as, download the image, and store this NFT. That's been the problem. Right? So what if we took that to the extreme and we downloaded all of the NFTs or one collection, right, as a proof of concept and example? In the case of CryptoPunks, this is actually really easy to do. I could just literally Google CryptoPunks and I'll find their website over on larvalabs.com. Now we could read about the project, kind of understand what the heck we're doing, what all this is really. Check out some of the statistics as to, hey, how much all this stuff could sell for. Hundreds of thousands of dollars, a couple billion, millions every now and again. And if I were to hit F12 on my keyboard or just kind of, hey, open the developer tools in my browser, I could see any network requests that were made. Now, if I were to try and refresh this page with the control shift R, all I need to do is filter this on images and I could see, oh, scrolling up, I can see punk 2782 and 2821 and all of these given a specific link that referred to exactly that specific punk image. If I copy this value and then go put this in the address bar, I'll close out the developer tools here, zoom in just a moment, I could retrieve that actual crypto punk image. Now I could just bounce the number up and down rather than 2821, I could go to 2820 or 2822 and start to grab potentially any of these, all indexed by number. That's kind of a low resolution image though. So if we were to go check out any of the largest sales and go to a specific page for any CryptoPunk, we could do the exact same process. I'll refresh the page here and we can see that CryptoPunk 3100 is actually at a different URL and that is a much larger or higher resolution image. And while we could right click and save this image, I'll put this on my desktop here. Now, what is to stop us from opening a little bit of a better development environment? I'll spin up a Linux machine here. I'll work with Ubuntu. And now let's try and curl download that same file here. We'll call that CryptoPunk3100. And there we go. We can see that has been saved to our desktop. Perfect. Now, what is to stop me from doing a simple for loop going from 000, 000 all the way to 10,000. And we'll do a download of this same URL, but simply change the number to whatever it is that we are counting through in our loop. We'll add an iterator in there. And as I download each of these CryptoPunks, we can see it is just starting to pull right down. I've just right clicked and save as every single CryptoPunk. Here we go, let's start to see it cruising by. There's one, there's another, there's another. 
Now, obviously I'm connected through a VPN, and when I did this for real to download all 10,000 images, I was switching between different proxies and different user agents to not look as egregiously awful. <laughs> Now you might be saying, hey John, that's cool and all, but you're only able to do this, download all the images and scrape them from the internet because these are numerically indexed, right? 3100 and whatever value you wanted to change that to, you could then retrieve. That's IDOR. That's an IDOR vulnerability or an insecure direct object reference. And it's not really so much even a vulnerability in this case as it's just, that's how the files are being hosted. You might be much more interested in like, hey John, let's try and pull some stuff from OpenSea.io. You know, the actual marketplace where all the NFTs are stored and accessible. We could go ahead and explore any NFT collection we might like. And here this is all displayed for us, what new hotness is out and available. However, we might want to go check out what are the top uh, stuff going on. CryptoPunks, of course, reigning supreme. We have the Bored Ape Yacht Club, of course, though. This is the good meme one where just about everyone is kind of making fun of the fact, hey, you know, we're selling millions of dollars worth of pictures of monkeys. And this is a different dilemma, right? Because OpenSea is behind Cloudflare, which will be blocking you from trying to scrape or send repeated requests. And each of these actual images, if you right click and check it out, it is a Google address. It's at lh3googleusercontent.com, which might be Google Photos or Google Drive or Google anything really. And you can't just hit that over and over again. However, something to keep in mind though, as we are scrolling through any single OpenSea page, any single collection, everything that we see is gonna end up still being rendered and requested by our browser. So I haven't fleshed this all out just yet, but keep in mind, what if we were able to keep track of all of those image requests that have been made. As I keep scrolling down, you see more NFT images being requested, each URL for each of these monkeys, and their preview is displayed right here. This is still stored within your browser cache and whatever is actually being used to render and display this out on the page for you. If I clicked over to sources in our developer tools, I navigated to that LH3 Google user content, I'll have every single request for every single image ready for me to right click and save. While I haven't yet put this together, you could very easily have a Chrome or Firefox browser extension that saves all of these images as it sees them come across the wire, or use something like Selenium, or even set up a proxy that will be able to scrape all of these images as they come across. I tried honestly just listening with Wireshark, which sounds as silly as it is, but it is connecting through HTTPS, so you can't naturally save the images, even if you're just looking at the packet level. So that is something that I've been playing with and I still am playing with because I think it might be kind of neat to just, hey, you know, even as I'm browsing OpenSea, be able to snag and grab all of those potential NFT images that just come across the wire without hammering and beating up that endpoint like I have with LarvaLabs.com. And have I actually stolen this money, this NFT, this image? Because NFTs and cryptocurrency are turning out to be a lucrative gig sometimes, maybe. Uh, maybe more often than not, it turns out to be a scam or money laundering, but we won't really dive into all of that. Uh, but if you strike gold, you could cash in millions of dollars, billions of dollars. So the market cap is 2.1 six eight trillion dollars and now the mark oh oh it went to zero Yo! but for an nft digital media whether it be a song or a piece of music or a video or just an image like a jpeg file or a png or bitmap file it can just be copied and is that stealing that money well no sort of kind of because it is ownership that someone might purchase and acquire when they buy an NFT. Now in me having all 10,000 of these CryptoPunk NFTs, am I a billionaire now? Do I own the NFT? No, but I own the image now. I have the data. I have what would have been purchased in buying an NFT, right? This is a thought and idea that was explored by Jeffrey Huntley, I believe back in November when he started this project of the NFT Bay. You can find it online, the nftbay.org, and it's the idea that, hey, we've stolen every single NFT or non-fungible token or image out on the internet because we could just host all of those IPFS records or how these are actually, you know, linked and referenced out on the blockchain. He actually had a really fascinating conversation with another YouTuber and content creator, CoffeeZilla. I'll link the video and his channel in the description where they discuss this idea that the NFT and the sale of the purchase of the NFT is 
a distinction between selling treasure maps and the treasure itself. The treasure being the actual image, the JPEG, the PNG, the bits and bytes and data, while the treasure map is simply the link or the pointer to that actual image and that representation on the blockchain. Now, my project, or at least this initiative that I kind of was tinkering with, differs and varies greatly from that NFT bay because, well, Jeffrey was really just showcasing those IPFS records and resources. It's not the data and images themselves. It's not the treasure. It's the treasure map. What I had done by ripping all those images is collecting all the treasure itself, all the images, JPEGs, and PNGs. Could this be done for every single NFT? Yeah. And hey, guys, listen, again, this video is not meant to bash on NFT collectors or NFT enthusiasts or cryptocurrency enthusiasts or NFT collections at all or anything. Uh, truthfully, I don't even know how well this or won't be well received. Uh, it, it is just to kind of illuminate more of the dilemma and problem with this sort of technology that I don't think we found the right use for yet, but with images and songs and videos being a technical digital thing it has this issue of the copy and paste that is inevitable by the nature of the medium on its own that's i don't know if there is no fix there is no solution because that's inherent to the platform of how this is distributed i hope this opens your eyes a little bit and uh, i wanted honestly just to see how far could we push the envelope right sure i did this with crypto punks uh i wanted to explore more on OpenSea. that's really the holy grail because you can get just about anything in there but all these other crypto coin or uh nft projects in their websites how they might display and promote their own nft could this be done with pudgy penguins or crypto kitties or literally any and my last thoughts as we wind this thing down, one of the driving forces for NFTs and one of the good aspects of it really is that digital artists can get paid and receive funding for their work, for their creative efforts, for their artwork that they produce. That is a good thing. And I am a strong believer in that. But when that thing is sort of plagued by... Ponzi schemes and mid-level marketing and scams and uh, rug pulls, etc. I don't know. The cryptocurrency scene is just weird to me, in my opinion, so far. I am a strong proponent of digital artists getting paid for the great creative work that they do. And my silly thing, just like scraping all these images down from a website, should not by any means be a bash against them. That's not what I'm trying to... I don't want to muddy the waters in that. When it is a collection of 16-bit a bunch of pixels kind of slapped together in MS Paint or, I don't know, just pictures of monkeys with silly hats on. I don't know. That isn't, in my mind, the grandiose, incredible, fantastic work that real, genuine digital artists could be getting that credibility and funding for. I don't know, man. Cryptocurrency is weird. NFTs are weird. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was kind of fun. I hope it was kind of cool. Hope it opened your eyes to some things and maybe gave you some inspiration and ideas to go tinker and explore out on your own. Or, I don't know, maybe motivate you to take part in some of those interesting discussions and uh, ideas and thoughts on ownership and art and digital work and all of this in the creative and content space. Hey, check out CoffeeZilla's video. Check out his channel. Check out all the great things that Jeffrey Huntley has produced and i really hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you in the next one With the